now we will listen to a presentation from Eric Digman Wilklund, CEO at Circo. Welcome. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Great to be here at uh, Biostock and I'm glad to present Circo. Our forward-looking statement. RNA is emerging as a very interesting therapeutic class. In the last two years, we saw the approvals of the first mRNAs with the COVID vaccines. And these drugs have rapidly emerged to be the top selling drugs overall in the pharmaceutical market. The two mRNA vaccines from Moderna and BioNTech sold for more than $50 billion last year alone, which is remarkable. It puts them in the top five of all drugs combined. So this proves finally that mRNA or, or RNA in general is an efficient therapeutic. It's clinically validated, it's logistically validated, and it's now been shown to commercially also be viable. This is a massive breakthrough for RNA therapeutics. However, mRNA still faces uh, several challenges that have held back development and it's also holding back the potential for the future. The biggest drawback of mRNA or linear RNA in general is that they're highly unstable. They get degraded fast, they have a short half-life. And this short half-life, it complicates delivery. It's hard to get the RNA to where it needs to, to go and it's hard to keep it there for long enough to do its job. We believe that circular RNA can overcome several of these challenges and really can be the next frontier in RNA therapeutics. Now, let me tell you why circular RNA is so exciting. So circular RNA, by being circular, it lacks a free end. Now, mRNA gets broken down by what we call exonucleases. In this slide, you can see them as these small Pac-Mans. They eat up this, the, the RNA from the ends. A circular RNA doesn't have an end, so the Pac-Man doesn't have anything to latch onto. This means that the circular RNA is resistant to the RNA degradation mechanisms in the cell, and it massively improves the half-life. Due to this advantage, you can now have a much more stable RNA species, and you can achieve also several other functionalities that simply are not doable with mRNA. So we, we view circular RNA as a toolbox to create a completely new class of medicines. And that's precisely what we're doing at, at Circo. Uh, our science is led by Dr. Thomas Hansen. Uh, Dr. Thomas Hansen, together with myself, we are actually the discoverers of circular RNA. Uh, back when we did our PhDs 15 years ago, we stumbled across circular RNA looking for something else, and we published the first uh, paper on circular RNA. Thomas then built a research career in an, an academic group studying circular RNA and really has emerged as probably the, the most experienced circular RNA scientist in the world. And we have now fortunately been able to recruit him to Circo and he's setting up our circular RNA program. We're not the only ones that are interested in circular RNA, believe this is a future very exciting therapeutic class. This graph here shows the financing deals that have been done in the past five years for RNA therapeutics. You know, the biotech market was in quite dire situation the last couple of years. There has been very few financings done, but actually the RNA therapeutics financing market has been strong. In 2022, which was a very difficult year for biotech in general, RNA therapeutic financing was higher than pre-pandemic pre levels, more than double compared to 2020. So RNA therapeutics is actually one pocket that is still doing well in biotech. If you break down the RNA financings, it turns out about 40% of all the RNA deals that were done were for circular RNA concepts. So this is not something we are just making up. This is really where the momentum is uh, at the moment. Uh, there has been several deals and large companies launching. We, we generated this slide here to, to show the momentum. Two famous companies in the space called La Ronde and Orna Therapeutics launched with massive Series A financing. Or, Orna did a deal with Merck. This all happened in the span of the last 12 to 18 months. And then just a few weeks ago, another company, Orbital Therapeutics, launched in the US with a Series A mega round. So this space is really moving fast and we are planning to latch onto this and be a player. And we're doing things differently. These companies are doing uh, synthetic circular RNA. It means they're effectively doing what BioNTech and Moderna did. LNP packaged circular RNA that they utilize as a messenger. So it's a repeat of the mRNA playbook just using circular RNA. We're doing it differently because we are using a vector delivery approach. We are generating DNA-based vectors that contain the recipe to generate circular RNA intracellularly, in situ, in the patient. So the product we're making is DNA. We give this DNA to the patient and it contains the recipe for the patient to make its own circular RNA. No one else we are aware of is deploying this technology for circular RNA therapeutics. 
to explain this a bit more granularly, the core of our technology is what we call CIRCVEC. Uh, in this little schematic, you can see it as this uh, genetic cassette. It's a piece of DNA, and this piece of DNA carries the instructions, the recipe for the cell for how to generate the circular RNA. And then the circular RNA is formed, and we've engineered the circular RNA in a way that it's very stable. It's very efficient in protein translation. It already outperforms mRNA. And by virtue of its stability, we've built in several additional regulatory functionalities as well. We have filed IP for this core construct, and uh, we have this uh, nicely covered and it's agnostic to what vector you're using. So the CIRCVEC cassette can be deployed in any DNA-based vector system of your choice. We are focusing primarily or initi initially by using, using adenovirus as a delivery platform. And this is the, the second step of our IP platform, is the utilization of this CIRCVEC cassette for circular RNA generation from adenoviral uh, vectors. We have already demonstrated that our circular RNAs are much more stable than mRNA and that they produce more protein than mRNA. You can see here in in vitro experiments, we have achieved a 15 times extended half-life of circular RNA versus mRNA. On the right-hand side of, of this slide, we show you some data on the protein expression. And what we're seeing is that even with lower copies of M circular RNA present, we can make more protein. A circular RNA beats an mRNA on a head-to-head -head basis. And then as expected, if you compare 48 hours to 96 hours over time, the circular RNA accumulates, whereas the mRNA degrades. And we anticipate this to grow, the, the difference to grow further over time so that the RNA, the circular RNA will be persistent and, and uh, keep producing the protein in a much more stable manner than you can achieve with an mRNA. If this works in patients, it will be a massive breakthrough, opening up completely new territories for what you can do with RNA therapeutics. We are currently replicating these data in vivo and we expect to be able to share in vivo data by Q3 this year. Here we compare our technology to, to some of our competitors. La Ronde and Orna I mentioned before, they're doing the synthetic circular RNA approach. And Moderna and BioNTech, they're doing synthetic mRNA. I'd like to highlight a couple of advantages. One major advantage is that by using our adenoviral system, we can reach solid tumors. We can get circular RNAs delivered into cancer cells. And this is simply not doable with the approach that these other companies are deploying. So we believe we have a unique angle in oncology to get circular RNA into solid tumors, and this will be the first program in the clinic for a circular RNA therapeutic in cancer. In addition, we are building on vector technology, which is already existing. The manufacturing is already existing. We can quickly plug and play this into our existing uh, setup. Circular RNA manufacturing simply does not yet exist. So the manufacturing needs to be set up and it needs to be scaled up, and this will take significant investment and significant time. So again, we think we have a head start here by deploying vectors that are more easy to manufacture. We can be quicker to the clinic and we can get to the clinic in indications which are currently not uh, possible to approach using conventional RNA technology. Let me give you an idea of how we're thinking to deploy this. We see this as a platform with broad potential. The first step, as I've said before, is oncology. We're building on existing legacy technology in the company. We have an adenoviral delivery system that is already, it's already been in a, in a large number of patients. We're re-engineering this for circular RNA delivery into solid tumors to enable long-term and durable expression of proteins inside of cancer cells. This we aim to have in the clinic already in 2025. The second step of our development plan is in vaccines. In, in vaccines, we are planning to use the power of adenovirus together with the circular RNA to make potent single-dose vaccines that really can be a transformational vaccine concept. This we're planning to develop preclinically and then out-license to a collaboration partner. And eventually, we want to move this into rare disease. We think circular RNA has a particularly compelling uh, benefit in, in rare disease setting where you need to replace proteins because this, the, these, these transcripts are highly stable. They can give durable protein expression and deliver and replace a malfunctioning protein over time. Again, something which is not doable with a very unstable mRNAs. So we think over time, maybe the biggest potential lay in rare disease and we're planning to expand into this area in the, in the short term future. The concept looks like this in cancer. 
So we're generating adenoviral vectors that we inject directly into solid tumors. They carry then the recipe for making circular RNA to the cancer cells. The circular RNA is produced in the tumor, and the circular RNA then express the protein of choice we want to deliver, and it exerts additional regulatory functionality to have multifunctional, highly targeted anti-cancer therapeutics. And again, the first candidate here, we expect to bring into the clinic already in 2025. Similarly with vaccines, we have a DNA-based vector, carries the CIRCVEC cassette. We express then the antigens from the circular RNA, which gives you prolonged durable expression of the antigen, and thereby a stronger and more durable immune response. In rare disease, we've done an extensive screen, filtered existing disease or monogenic disorders that we believe can be targeted with our approach. And we have arrived at a short list of five disease areas that we are prioritizing to, to, for further evaluation. And we anticipate to start in vivo work in the second half of the year and present data within 12 months of a proof of concept in a rare disease setting. So overall, we think we have a unique edge in this emerging field of circular RNA. We have world-leading experts on board. Our team is led by probably the most experienced circular RNA scientist in the world, Dr. Thomas Hansen. Our delivery platform opens new avenues for how to use circular RNA. We can use it in oncology, we can use it in vaccines. This is already ongoing, we're starting in vivo work, and then eventually we're moving into to rare disease, which may be a massive opportunity for the future. And we aim to be the first into the clinic with a circular RNA product that will be in oncology, and we hope to achieve that in 2025. So with that, I, I wrap up the presentation, and uh, we're ready to take some questions. Thank you so much for that presentation. And many of our viewers might know you by your previous name, Targovax. So I was wondering if you could just make a quick uh, comment about this recent change. Yes, correctly. We, we uh, recently changed our name from Targovax to Circio. The new name uh, reflects our efforts in circular RNA. This is now the number one strategic priority for the company. And CIRC is for circular RNA, naturally, and IO is for immunotherapy immuno-oncology. This reflects our heritage as an immunotherapy company. That's where we come from. And we also intend, as I've described, to, to move into oncology in an immunotherapy context going forward. So we, we designed this name to, to point both forward and, uh, and also stay consistent with our legacy. And as I understand it, you're seeking for a partnership. What kind of uh, companies are you looking for? We are looking for partnerships in, in multiple avenues. We can use our platform to deliver therapeutic proteins of choice. So we're looking for partners with interesting therapeutic proteins uh, that could be efficiently delivered from our vector system. And this can be agnostic of, of therapeutic area. It can be a, in oncology or, or other contexts, uh, but sort of making on-demand uh, constructs for, for partners. That is one avenue. The second avenue we were intending to partner is in vaccines. Uh, developing vaccines clinically is a large undertaking. Uh, we believe it's probably better to outlicense our vaccine concept to a, to a vaccine company. So our intention there is to develop a preclinical proof of concept and then seek uh, partnerships to bring that into the clinic. And uh, I think that should be achievable in uh, maybe already in 2024. We could end this by looking forward. What, uh, where do you see the company in five years from now? In five years from now? I see Circio as the dominant player in vector-delivered circular RNA. We want to be a key player in the circular RNA space overall, and we want to have a versatile platform that is validated in multiple settings uh, with our vector delivery approach of, of circular RNA. I see. It will be interesting to follow your journey. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having me.